Well, good afternoon, and I want to thank everybody for coming and everybody who is viewing. We do have some important news to discuss, so let's get going. As many of you know, the Justice Department, through the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, has been looking into whether GM violated any laws in connection with the ignition switch issues that led us to recall 2.6 million vehicles last year. Today, the government is announcing that an agreement which resolves that investigation. And I thought it was important that we have an all-employee meeting to discuss what's happening, just as we did 15 months ago when, we, when I shared the findings of the Volucas report. But before I talk about the settlement, let's pause for a moment and remember, people were hurt and people died in our cars. That's why we're here today. I have said many times how sorry I am about what happened. And on behalf of all of us, I have apologized to the families who lost loved ones and the, to those who were injured. And I do so again today. We let those customers down in that situation. We didn't do our job. And as part of our apology to the victims, we promised to take responsibility for our actions. So we accept the penalties being announced today because that's what it means to be held accountable. But apologies and accountability won't count for much if we don't change our behavior. But we can be proud that we have. And that's what I want to focus on in our time together today. First, let's talk briefly about the agreement. The centerpiece is what's called a deferred prosecution agreement. It means that the government agrees to defer prosecution of charges against General Motors related to the ignition switch for three years. After three years, if we meet the terms and conditions set by the government, federal prosecutors will seek to dismiss the charges, and this matter will be completely closed. Among our obligations, the agreement requires us to cooperate fully with the federal government and obey all laws. We are to work with the government to establish an independent monitor to review and assess our policies and procedures in specific areas relating to safety issues and recalls. And we must pay a $900 million fine. This is a tough agreement. It further highlights the mistakes that were made by certain people in GM, and it imposes significant penalties and obligations. Make no mistake. We are committed to honor these obligations. As you recall in our meeting when we talked about the Volucas report last year, I made the point that I never wanted anyone at General Motors to forget what happened. I said I wanted to keep the tragedy fresh in our minds because I never wanted to see it repeated. I feel the same way about this agreement. We should not forget about the consequences of our actions. I've talked about behaviors and how they define our culture. Facing our problems head on is a behavior that drives us, and it will help us fulfill our mission to become the world's most valued automotive company. Today's news is difficult for all of us at GM, but the way we responded to the recall is a testament to who we really are and to the strength of our core values focused on the customer, relationships, and excellence. And let me talk about excellence for a minute. Let's remember, we are committed to act with integrity at all times. We are committed to have the courage to say and do what's difficult. And we are committed to taking accountability for our results. We have talked about values a lot over the last year because they're so important to our long-term success. And you can see how they shaped each of the steps we took over the last 15 months. First, we conducted a swift and robust internal investigation. We provided timely and meaningful cooperation to the government's investigators. We furnished the government with information and a continuous flow of unvarnished facts. We voluntarily provided confidential documents and information. We held people accountable for their actions and for their inactions and we established a full and independent victims' compensation program 
that is expected to pay out more than $600 million. We lived our values, and it made a big difference. The steps we took to do the right thing at every turn persuaded the Justice Department to defer prosecution. They acknowledged as much in their announcement, and this was a very important validation. Knowing GM as I do, I knew you would turn this crisis into a catalyst for meaningful change, and you have. You made GM fundamentally better, and the changes have benefited every single one of our customers and the industry as a whole. And Mark Royce is going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But before he does, I'd like to leave you with a few final thoughts. The ignition switch problem has brought us under intense scrutiny. It has been humbling and deeply disappointing. But we have faced our issues with integrity, dignity, and a clear determination to do the right thing for the short term and for the long term. With the resolution of this government investigation, we close one important chapter in this story. And to everyone who worked so hard to fulfill our commitment of cooperation, I express my gratitude and appreciation. I also express my gratitude and appreciation to all of you who have worked so hard on the safety of our vehicles. I would also like to commend the U.S. Attorney's Office for the professional manner in which they conducted this investigation. I have said many times, I wish I could turn back the clock. I know you do as well. If we could, we would, but we can't. What we can do is make sure we respond in the right way, and in, we have done that in this case, and we will continue to do so in everything. I concluded my remarks about the Volucas report by saying, I believe in GM, and I believe in you. And this past year has only strengthened my confidence in each of you and this company. So thank you, and now I'd like to turn the stage over to Mark Royce.